All right, g'day Navicastrians. Welcome to a, a jet stream that we're actually recording uh, via video. We've I've tried to do a couple of uh, a couple of live stream chats with with Laurie and Michael Kane. And apologies for anybody who checked out those videos because I understand they were quite frustrating to watch. They were definitely frustrating to record. Um, so yeah, we we worked out how to do a recording within Skype itself, and then be able to download the uh, download the video at a later point and upload it as a as a uh, as a video file rather than trying to stream it so i think that might be the best way of doing things from now on but uh thought we'd get together and have a bit of a chat over some recent news and see what our other two guys have been uh doing in iso and uh it's good day to uh dr m hey how is everyone oh, i'm doing fantastic and you're looking very uh very avocado -y today that's uh your your dress game on um on, on twitter and uh, instagram is uh obviously top notch it's very I popular I have been maintaining it through ISO life, yes. And if you well, obviously with uh, not spending money going out and drinking and all those other fun things that we usually do, have you been spending more money or less money on dresses? Oh, look, it um, definitely I've been saving money on fuel and not going out drinking, so I probably can buy a few more dresses when this is over. But like a lot of the population, this has highlighted to me uh, that I should probably have some savings in case I get fired because of a virus that no one expected to come. So maybe I'll, I'll hold off on the dresses for a little while. And it's a uh, big g'day to Lukey. How are you going with the, uh, the whole isolation shutdown and everything else with no training or anything else happening at the moment? Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm not going too bad actually. I'm going pretty good. Um, I got stood down a while ago, uh, a few weeks ago. Um, obviously, with no football around, it's hard to do a job in football. So, um, so I've uh, just been been off, um, which has been fine. Uh, I guess same as them, not going out and no football, no training, that sort of thing. Petrol has been pretty uh, pretty cheap for me. I think I filled up. Uh, during the week for the first time in about six weeks, which normally would get me through about a week or a half or two weeks or so. Um, I, uh, yeah, have just spent the time, um, have redone my room, so room's now nice and blue and white. Your mother is so proud. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, I have invested in a new computer, so uh, hopefully the, all the issues we were, I was having previously with the uh, streams uh with the uh podcasts and everything uh hopefully that's all in the past now uh, we've also upgraded to nbn now so i was gonna uh, say did your computer come with new nbn <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, there's a combination of bad internet and uh bad computer but i think we're i think we've got everything sorted properly now i mean the phrase upgrading to nbn is obviously a um a matter of opinion depending on what you have and where you have it so is is it been a little bit more stable than what you've and I, I do have to uh, I do have to apologize to people my computer is here and my webcam is here so I've got to make sure I'm looking at the camera when I'm doing this so if I gaze off into a different part of the screen it's because I'm actually looking at my laptop at the time um, so yeah is your, is your, your MBN actually uh, a decent connection or is it is it uh, a little yeah bit no it's really good um, before before we got it our internet would die any rain, any wind, anything like that. Uh, our max upload speed or download speed was about four megabytes. Um, now we're at about 12 times that. Beautiful. So um, it's been fantastic um, having proper internet that doesn't cut out the second that someone uses the microwave or the weather changes. <laughs> any shout out for your ISP? No. No? No? Okay. No, it's still shocking, but... Okay. <laughs> big, big thumbs up to Aussie Broadband. Um, any other other our, other internet service providers are available. Um, M, what's the first thing you're going to do when uh, the the restrictions are lifted and we can all go out and reinfect each other because we haven't tested enough to make sure there's no community transmission and people wondering <laughs> wandering around being asymptomatic. I, I, we, we sort of had a chat before we started recording. It was really positive, and then M's like, "Yeah, but second wave." And I'm like, "No, don't bring that up." But yeah, what what are you going to do when uh, restrictions get lifted and hopefully before we have to slam them all back down again? Mm, yeah, no, sorry, my degree in epidemiology probably gives me a different view on the the situation than everyone else. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to rush out when they lift restrictions. I'm going to let everyone else go out and knock themselves out and. I'm actually quite happy at home. I'm going to struggle to go back out again, I think. I am um, 
I'm enjoying the hermit life and teaching from home and, you know, the internet keeps us all connected and, yeah, I'm probably going to struggle a little bit to to go. I never liked crowds to start with. I only put up with crowds for, you know, things that I really like, like football and music. So it's it's going to be a little bit strange. Um, but, yeah, I don't. there's nothing I'm really hankering for. Like, I miss, I miss my friends. Oh, I guess. Sorry. Sorry, Sarah, if you're watching. My twin sister had a baby. So probably going and seeing that is probably my, should be my first priority. Um, <laughs> but yeah, not, not so keen to, to get out um, when they release us. Um, but we'll see what happens. I'm looking forward to getting to go back to sports and, and things like that. Eventually, we are still planning on having a hockey season this year. So um, if that gets off the ground, I will am looking forward to playing but I think it's gonna be a long time before I'm comfortable in a pub or something again especially because I'm once I get drunk I'm a hugger and a toucher and I'm not a social distancer when I've got a few beers in me so it probably will be a bit risky. Um, are you pro or anti COVID safe app? Um, uh, look I get I get what people are unhappy about um, but I did download it um, based on the fact that if you know I have been exposed to someone I want to know um, and if we go back to teaching on campus then obviously there's a lot of people who move around on campus on any given day but the scientist in me really wants to clarify that just because you have the app it's not magic you do still need to make sure you wash your hands and don't touch surfaces and um, don't touch your face and you know all those kinds of things and still practice that distancing because it's it's no good just knowing when really it would be better off to avoid the infections to start with. Yeah, so it's it's probably a big message to remind everybody at the moment we're minimising, we haven't eliminated, um, we're never going to totally eliminate it until we get a vaccine, but even then, is it something we're going to have to live with for a fair while? Is it ever going to be, can you ever, I mean, you can't eradicate the flu, so there are other viruses and bacteria around that you, you can never fully get rid of, so there's just... Are people sort of thinking this is something that's going to pass and we're never going to have to worry about it again? Or is it something we're going to be living with for a while? It depends what happens. We've had other versions of this virus and, you know, similar things um, like SARS that have come and gone as little flashes in the pan and then being self-controlled. But this is a whole different ball game. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if this is a, a new part of life. Um, and, you know, we've only really successfully eradicated one virus ever with a vaccine anyway. So it really is going to change things and it is a bit of a, a worry. Um, and, yeah, we're probably going to be adjusting to a whole new normal. Hopefully we learn how to treat it better in the future, though. So, Well, I mean, this is the benefits of having a, an actual professional on the podcast and we really love having Dr. Rem on to, to provide. Yeah, I'm just a food science and nutritionist. What do I know? <laughs> um, Luke, what about you? What are you looking forward to once hopefully things go back to sort of normal? What, where are you? What's your first port of call going to be? I don't really know, to be honest. I haven't really thought that far ahead. I guess similar to Emma, I, I, it just doesn't seem sort of like we've we've done a whole lot to have beaten this. Like it just feels like if if this was something that we've beaten, it hasn't been long enough. And as long as there's still cases popping up every day, you know, I, I get everyone's keen to get back into it and everything. I'm more than happy to still stay here. Hey, I'm, I'm more than happy to just stay home, be safe. Um, yeah, I, uh, in, I guess once, I guess the thing I'm probably missing most is, um, probably just the social aspect of football. I have gone from, training slash playing in some capacity three, four, five times a week to none. So for me, that's probably been the biggest thing. Um, I, I can't wait to get back and play, but what's that going to look like? Who yeah. knows? Um, who knows, who knows what it'll look like when Either we actually side get to socially it. distanced. <laughs> <laughs> I saw this thing, one of my friends sent me this thing, um, after football was originally suspended in March where this, uh, futsal tournament or futsal um, association down in Melbourne were still playing yep. um, because they weren't under the FFA banner. But what they were doing was they uh, they had introduced a new, a new rule where you were supposed to keep a metre away from the opposition. You weren't allowed to tackle them. You're supposed to stay a metre away. I'm like, What's, what? <laughs> what's the point in that? Yeah, that seems counterproductive. Makes so, walking it in easy. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> 
<laughs> um, yeah, weird. Yeah, so you know, there's all this, all this stuff. You know, it, it, there's a lot of talk about oh, you know, we can do this and do that. And I, again, like Emma said, I don't know if I'll be comfortable doing things until we know a it's gone or b we've got a vaccine and we can deal with it a bit better. Yeah. Um, so, or at least thought, a few more ventilators purchased in our hospitals. Yeah, yeah, something that because you know while while I'm sort of in the the age bracket where predominantly people do not get horribly ill or if they do they survive or if they end up in hospital like they saw over in Italy and stuff because they're younger they they choose to save those people above um, people who are in their 60s 70s 80s plus and all that um, but the thought of that sort of you know me carrying it or something and giving it to other people that may be in that category and stuff that's uh, probably the biggest thing that worries me. Yeah, well, and we don't know what the side effects are yet, right? Like asymptomatic mm. carriage might end up you're in the higher risk for stroke when you are 50 or 60. Like yeah. we, we don't know any of those things yet. So it's, yeah, for young people to say, oh, we're going to be fine, I think is really risky behaviour. But I guess young people are known for risky behaviour, aren't yes? So Yeah, we're all young. Rimmer, rimmer. <laughs> <laughs> we're all young ones then. Um, and uh, I'd rather be in our position than um, being living in the US at the moment because uh, that's just a, a one one giant shit show at the moment. <laughs> so, well, the situation sports will start again sooner in America because everyone's just who's gonna die will die, so it's gonna be over faster for them. But they're at the point where they've lost more people than they did in the Vietnam War, and that's just horrifying. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the other big thing, and this sort of tie into jets types, jets and A League type stuff, is when the borders are going to open back up uh, anytime soon because it, it gone are the days uh, for, for the near future that we've popped on a plane and gone overseas to go on holidays. It's, it's going to be local holidays or maybe a trip over to New Zealand, which I'm fingers crossed, Wellington next season. But uh, that, that's, that's going to be the, uh, the, and the major issue for us, Lukey, is, is we've got some international players and our coach who are currently overseas when are they going to be able to come back in? But alternatively, the NRL have said that the Warriors are able to come back in after they isolate for 14 days and then they're based here. So th there's there's hopefully going to be a plan for, for these sorts of things to happen. You'd hope so. But then again, I just get the feeling that it's all a ploy for the NRL and that, oh, the A-League, you can live without that. You don't need to have um, those players. You've still got a squad and stuff. You can just go with them. But it's just how I sort of feel about it, that, yeah, they've, they've made an exception for the Warriors and they might make an exception for the Knicks to come back in um, at a later date. But if it's for other, like if we've got um, players over in, likely we, I will, I don't assume we have anyone currently in the US. Um, but, you know, if we, if we did have anyone, I would imagine that from one of those... Champness is still in the US. Well, Jamness, yeah, but we haven't had him all season, so I, I forget he's I forget he's part of the team still. So <laughs> so did Laurie when I talk. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about Joey. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think uh, like we got we got a few in Europe. Um, I don't think we'd see them back. I don't think Europe. I don't think we'll be able to have any sort of travel between Europe, America. Like I, I think anyone who's over there is they're not coming back. Yeah, well, I mean, we've got uh, Houlihan, uh, Burns is obviously gone, uh, uh, Joe Ledley is obviously over there as well, um, and yeah, like we said, Carl's over in Canada at the moment, so yeah, it's interesting. Um, so, Em, the news obviously come out towards the end of last week uh, that the tentative plans, I don't think this has been confirmed, I think this is just media rumour at the moment, but they've been fairly on the money when it's come up before, is that the... Teams will go back into training on the 1st of July uh, and then the season will restart on the 1st of August. So uh, good on one hand that the season will resume um, and it's going to be interesting to see what the time difference is going to be by the end of the season that we have to restart and the beginning of the following season is going to be. It's looking possibly likely that they might just have a few weeks off for finals and then two weeks off after that and roll straight into the new season again. But the seem to be holding back 
little bit more than what the because the NRL is talking about coming back at the end of the month. So why are we taking why are we deciding to play it more safe than what the other is it purely because we've got such a long off season we're looking to maybe uh combine the two seasons into one and just make next season a, a longer season as it were i'm gonna sound like a massive bitch but i knew even in high school that the smart boys played soccer and the dumb boys played nrl um i say that as someone who watches and enjoys both sports um, but I feel like the NRL is much more interested in maintaining the commercial value and the hype around their season. Um, and I guess the the A League is more vested in the the player safety. It might come from the fact we've got a better players union in the the A League than we do in the NRL. Um, it might come from the fact that there's more money and um, you know more to lose in the NRL. But I think the A League's doing the right thing. I think not promising anything to say this is our plan right now and maybe it will change i think is the right thing because none of us know what's happening in the world right now you I'm know i'm pre deliver exactly and i mean i'm prepared the university is planning on going back to teach next semester but we're going to be prepared to teach remotely if we have to and i think anyone in any endeavor should be working on that assumption right now we don't know um, what's going to happen in the world so i think it's it's smart of the a league i think if you end up you know rolling the two seasons in together and having a short break we play um two seasons of hockey each year there's a summer and a winter season and we have two weeks off between each season and and roll straight in granted i'm not playing at the elite level but um we do it each year and it's fine um but i guess the real we thing is i'm glad i'm a jets fan right now and not one of the teams who actually have something still really invested in this season because i'm quite happy if our players stay safe and we let the rest of them you know, put the the teams who really have a chance at at being the the finalists, um, put them at each other, and maybe us and a few other guys at the bottom of the table should just stay out of it. How, how busy is your IT faculty been trying to get all of your teachers and lecturers and professors set up to do all this stuff? From I mean, I've been having all sorts of problems trying to just work out three people in a bloody Scott and trying to broadcast it to Facebook. How how, how busy have how busy that, is, uh, the They've IT. dealt with it so well. They have been so kind. And I had to ring up because I locked myself out of my voicemail right at the same time as IT was trying to change everyone over to work from home and accessing VPNs and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I had to ring up and say, um, I'm sorry, I'm locked out of my voicemail. And they were actually really nice to me and fixed it straight away. So, yeah, it, it could be worse. So how's it all working? Are you recording lectures to video and then sending them out or are you doing live lectures or how, how's all that sort of how's all that sort of happening? I, I mean, obviously, it's massively dependent on our really crap. Thanks, Tony and um, Malcolm for your really rubbish hodgepodge mix of a uh, internet internet system. Um, how, how's it been? What, what have you been able to do? What, what's, the, what's the university been able to do as sort of a, a broad reflection of what everyone else is pretty much limited to? We've been doing a, a bit of both. So I post key videos um, as lectures, so short videos for the key messages. Um, and then we have tutorials where we all log in together, kind of like this, um, but with a different different system where we get to talk through the content like we normally would. Um, you know, the, the good thing is being a university um, lecturer is the, the students are all a lot younger than me. So they're all technologically savvy. So they're all, they love it. They love, you know, getting online and, um, doing the the chat, I think they prefer it. Some of them to having to get dressed and come into a classroom. So yeah, they've dealt with it really well. Um, and other than when my cat decides to climb up the back of the chair and lick my head while I'm trying to give a live seminar, um, I haven't really had many problems. My biggest issue is the light. Um, I've got down lights, and I hate having the down light making shadows on my face while I'm recording videos. But that's just because I'm vain, and it's not an actual problem. So yeah, apparently the um, the the people who sell those clip on like ring lights that you attach to the front of your computer or your, your webcam are been doing a roaring trade. <laughs> yeah. That's Cause there's lots of vain people like me out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't what I was trying to say. Um, that's true. I know it. <laughs> um, what about you, Luke? What's uh, what have you been, have you been able to do any of this sort of stuff or is it, it, it mainly been limited to catching up with friends and, so you've been doing a lot of Twitch streaming recently. So how's how's that all been going? Have you been able to get it stabilised and and getting people involved and 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 not having the the issues with live streaming that I've been having? 
Uh, it, it's been a work in progress. Uh, I, uh, I've never sort of done anything like this before. So um, learning programs, um, learning how technology works in that capacity is something that I've never had to deal with. So uh, I think I've gotten the hang of it. Um, I, well, that was part of the reason, excuse me, part of the reason why I wanted to get a new computer was so I could at least attempt it. So I was like, well, well, I have anything to do for a couple of months. So let's uh, let's try something I would never have done before. So, um, but yeah, it, going through and trying to find equipment has been a, a challenge in itself because everywhere's just sold out of everything. Like the webcam I got, I had to get off eBay because yeah. nowhere had any webcams until now. And this was going back like four or five weeks. So, um, but it's been going pretty good. Um, we, I had a pretty uh, rough night last night on there. I was playing. <laughs> that was self-inflicted though. <laughs> it was self-inflicted. Uh, I was playing Super Mario 64 and was drinking. Um, <laughs> and that's why you don't drink and drive children. Yes. That's why you don't drink and drive. It ended up, uh, it ended up poorly for me. <laughs> um, but I've had a few people message me and tell me they enjoyed it. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't think that'll be a regular occurrence, though. So how how have you? So just from the mechanic side of things, you're you're using a sixty four. So how are you broadcasting what you're actually seeing? Are you have got have you got a camera set up on your TV and then? A camera set up on so you? For, for last night, I um, I actually have uh, Super Mario 64 uh, downloaded on my Wii U from um, the online store. So they were selling it online. So I got it on there. I'd never had it on the 64. So um, with it on the Wii U, I've got a um, game capture card. So you just plug it into the HDMI of the console and then in, into the computer. Uh, and it, it plays it through there, records it, and does all the audio and stuff. So okay. I just um, copy that into OBS and uh, it, it just does everything. So it really isn't too difficult. It was a difficult process to get my head around, but um, it's pretty much just plug in and play almost. Well, that's and that's been the problem I've been having. I've been using OBS to try and link Skype calls through OBS and then onto Facebook Live uh, yeah. to, try, to try and get, and that's been a massive issue because I don't know whether it's my Wi-Fi. I don't know whether it's my computer. My computer's an i7, and it's got eight megabytes of RAM. It should be and then as a solid state drive. So theoretically, I should have enough power there to be able to do all this. But it sort of has really worked out that way. I don't know if I've got driver issues. So um, yeah. If anybody's got any tips and tricks, hit us up. Message the Jetstream Facebook page. Um, but Lukey, how hard is it going to be if I can find a DVD of some old games and I can put the DVD into my computer and play it? How is difficult is it going to be to set up all of us watching a game and commentating on it? Uh, like, for instance, you had the Twitter poll a couple of weeks ago where you were going through all the all the the, the, the top Jets games. If I can find a couple of those and we yeah. can have a couple of us like this on a call where we're watching the game back and we're commentating on it. How, how hard is that going to be to set up? Um, I have no idea. I don't, I, I don't know enough about it. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> um, I think if you, if you were doing something like um, Discord, maybe, um, because you can do video calls on there and you can share screens on there. So someone can share a stream. I actually did it with um, one of my friends was streaming a game on there um, and we we're all playing some party games over over Discord on Friday night. And we had all of us sort of our faces all over there. And then there was one screen, which was the, um, the, the game and everything. So we, you'd probably be able to like pop it into, like pop the game into a DVD player or something um, stream that window uh, and then have the rest of us around it commentating. Um, I'm not sure about how it records or anything, um, but that might be something that you could do in Zoom as well, potentially. Okay, well, we'll have to, uh, that's going to be another mm -hmm. thing on the to-do list because obviously we've got um, we've got two months before we even can start talking, well, theoretically two months before the teams even start getting back into training. So. 
hopefully over the next couple of weeks, um, go back to I'm, I'm hoping to try and line up another Jets or ex-Jets player for doing a similar video to what we've been doing in the um, AMAs the last couple of weeks. And now that we know that this is more of a stable option, I'm going to be recording them as opposed to live streaming them so that we don't have these issues that we've been having in the last two of them. So uh, that's going to be something. And obviously um, uh, might not be uh, Emma or Luke, but we'll get a couple of the other guys as well and we'll try and do a, another update when we get some more information about what's going to happen because obviously, Em, we're going to have a lot of information coming out in the next couple of weeks about the what happens with player contracts because they're all supposed to be up on the 28th of May. Um, what's going to happen for this if the new season doesn't start till the 1st of August? Do those players go and then we sign players as if for a new season? But they're playing part of the old season. How, how is it all going to work? I don't think anyone knows how it's going to work yet. Um, I think the, the Players Union has a lot of negotiating to do with the teams and um, there's probably a lot of discussions to be had, but I don't think anyone knows what's going to happen. It's, it's you know, untrodden ground. And, you know, good luck to them all because I can see both both points of view, um, you know, people not wanting to spend money on things that that they aren't getting what they're paying for, but also, you know, players have their careers and their livelihoods um, to, to take care of. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Um, and I'm sure we'll hear all about it because even though there's no sports on, the sports updates on the news are still just as long. So yeah. they're, they're talking a lot about this behind the scenes and stuff. So I'm sure we are going to hear all about it. Yeah, and it's not just us. It's football across the planet is in the same boat. Same thing I said with Laurie. Uh, hopefully people were able to pick up on that part of the conversation. Um, but uh, yeah, they're, everyone's in the same boat. They're, it, the APL is looking at coming back in the end of the month as well, but their contracts are all up at the end of June. Are they going to be able to get it finished by that time? Looks like Emma possibly has dropped out of the coach. We've lost Emma's video, but we'll continue. I'm still, still here. I'm still here, you. So um, yeah, if you you try and get your um, try and get your video back, we'll I'll, did I'll that thing off. again. Oh uh, yeah, sounds like a driver issue. No, I've worked out the problem. It's when my computer goes to sleep. Um, ah, yep. Because it's a laptop surface thing. Um, yeah. When it goes to sleep, I catch it right before it falls to sleep properly, but that seems to blinker the the whole system. So technology, I'm great at it. <laughs> so M dropped out, but she's back now. Um, what was the other thing I was going to say? Like, oh yeah, the broadcast, uh, the whole broadcast kerfuffle. Um, thank God we got news come out on Friday night that um, that Foxtel or Fox Sports have come up with the final quarterly payment that they were that was owed. So twelve million dollars has been paid to the FFA. So there's no no, no longer now that acts for want of a better word hanging over our heads of not having any money but the thing's going to be Foxtel still look like they want out of football so what are we even going to be on TV by the time the um, uh, by the time the the season starts again in 1st of August yeah uh, there's a lot of I think there's a lot of chatter on Facebook and Twitter that people are really wanting Optus to get on get behind it um the you know they caught a bit of slack in their first few years of broadcasting with the epl and the world cup um but the 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 programs they've got now and just how they sort of roll with things it looks like they've put a lot of resources into it so that may not be the worst decision um it would be a bit difficult with you know it's not on tv it's not on pay tv you've got to get it elsewhere um but i think people are I think nowadays people are a bit beyond the whole just Foxtel thing. You know, the Foxtel numbers are dropping off and we've, we're seeing so many more streaming services pop up. So if it's going to Optus, um, I reckon you'd see a lot of, I reckon you'd see people drop off from KO um, potentially uh, and switch to, switch to Optus, especially if it's the option of you're going to get the EPL and the A-League um, as well as other, do they, the, do they have the Champions League as well now, or I think they might? Yeah, they do. Mm. Yep. Yeah, so League is um, on Optus, but the problem is going to be that the FFA have a digital rights deal with Telstra. So how's how how <laughs> how how does that work uh, if you're using Optus for broadcast, but digital right, but the, the the digital rights is that going to infringe on on Telstra's deal? Is it going to require? 
getting out of that deal so that everything's through Optus. Oh, look, we've got a cat. <laughs> she wants to walk straight across the computer screen. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, look, it's, it's, it's probably end up on, uh, on YouTube later. Um, but yeah, so how, how, and the other one is obviously also a, a digital rights company that I'd not even heard of called DAZN that was um, apparently have some sort of deal over in the UK and they're spreading. <laughs> <laughs> It makes her look huge. She's just really close to the camera. She's actually a very small cat. It, it's it's sort of giving me flashbacks to when Tim Brook Taylor passed away a few Kitten weeks. Kong. Yeah, the k- Kitten Kong. <laughs> that was one of my favourite episodes. Uh, that was hilarious. Um, but yeah, it's, it, had you heard of uh, Dazone before, Luke? And what and is that? Uh, I don't know whether they're even going to be a viable a viable provider. But th- there seems to be stuff happening in the background that uh, makes you think that maybe a fox still pull out it's not going to be the death of the a-league i hadn't heard of it until you mentioned it so oh, okay. <laughs> um yeah you I... can just pick everything up right they did a good job with the ffa cup yeah well, it's, they they well that's where ben homer got his start um through by tv so yeah. There's always, you know, there's they know their football, they're, they're football people, so... The world's um, been reset, why not go back to grassroots? Yeah, there's, yeah, there's a lot of talk about, you know, people saying that this is the chance for a, another go or a, a reset of Australian football and everything, and I'm sure people have a lot of different opinions on what a reset of football means, um, in I guess in terms of the A-League, the fact that we've got this last payment, it sort of uh, so it's funny for me. So where the, where your two cameras are, Fern's microphone fluff is is there, and then the cat's coming out right next to it. Everyone probably everyone probably thinks I'm just making a scene um, and letting her carry on doing it. And why don't I just pick her up and put her away? But she's not the kind of cat that lets you pick her up. So. All bodily contact with Audrey is done on her terms. So if she's there, we go straight across. Audrey, that's... <laughs> come on, <Good> girl. <laughs> um, Sorry about that. Yeah, so my, my yeah, she's been. She... My kitten's a lot easier to <laughs> stay. Stay. Good kitty. Uh, yeah. The um the other thing that's going to be interesting, especially if we're looking at shifting away from Fox Sports and going to an Optus is Optus is really only a, a retransmitter. They don't do all, any of the broadcast stuff. So on the ground, actually broadcasting the games and doing, they can probably take camera feeds and do commentary in studio, but all that sort of stuff is going to have to be sorted out. Like does and Optus are apparently don't pay as much as what Fox Sports do or did. Um, I don't know whether they're going to be paying that much now, but do Optus look at getting into investing in being able to do outside broadcasts or does the FFA do what the Premier League does and handle all of their production in-house and then that all gets distributed to whoever needs it and that's where all the that's where all the um, uh, all the broadcast comes from. It's It's certainly... Um, interesting interesting times and a lot of details to be worked out by the time we come back on the 1st of August possibly. And I'm pretty glad it's not my job to figure that out. I, I reckon that's going to be an absolute shit fight trying to sort all that stuff out and how it's going to change and how it's going to carry on and I'm sure they will do something and I'm sure they will find someone who has the money and is willing to, to take the risk and, and make it happen but I am so glad that it is not my job to figure that out. It's going to be ridiculous. How much is it going to cost? How much do the FFA end up getting or does the A-League go on a separate deal to the FFA? Loki, it's, yeah, you just, just don't know. Uh, it's it's something that no one in our lifetimes had to deal with before. Um, and, yeah, as, as Em said, I'm so glad I don't have to make that decision because... Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a doozy. Whatever, I don't know, Luke, they... if they keep retiring the bigwigs from all the sporting organisations to save money, maybe you are going to be the top of the tree any moment. <laughs> By process of elimination, you're going to Bradbury it into the uh, <laughs> CEO role. That'd be great. 
That'd be great. Um, all right, so let's have a look at things from a Jets perspective. Um, Luke, we've got a few players coming off contract. I think the biggest one so far, the biggest one that comes off to me to the top of my head is Books. Um, his contract is up at the 20, whatever it is, of May. Um, we've got... Bobby Burns already gone. We've got a bunch of our internationals that we're not sure are going to come back. Uh, are we? What What do we do? Do we Do we look and see uh, what other players? Because obviously there's a bunch of other clubs that have players coming off contract as well. Um, is it going to be basically <laughs> everyone goes into the pot and it's just free for all to see who gets who, and we might be able to pick up some Australian players, but until well, until, A, until there's clarity, we don't know whether we're going to be able to get international players to come to Australia in the first place. And B, are they going to want to leave their families and potentially be away for that long period of time with not knowing what's happening with other countries' borders and COVID-19 happening in other areas? Uh, we, is it going to be we're going to have to rely on local players a lot more than than what we... Well, we're lucky that we've got Roy O'Donovan's naturalised. Um we, I could say Glenn Moss, but he's obviously going to be retiring, so that's not an option. But uh, are we in a? Are we going to be in a better, worse position? Um, what's going to happen with us being able to afford players? Do players that are currently stood down get back paid? What What happens with with all of this stuff? Yeah, it's a it's a very very good question. Um, the the the, the t- Clubs and everything were applying for JobKeeper or something, weren't they? So I'd imagine. So. Yeah, I'd imagine if they if if they were able to get it, then they'd at least be getting some income. Um, obviously not to the extent that they that a lot of them would be on, um, but I don't necessarily know whether that's something that the, until or if they were back paid what they were owed that maybe that voids their contract or something so they're able to go elsewhere. I would hope not. Um, I, I agree with you. I don't think we're going to see a lot of our foreigners back at the moment. Burns won't come back. Hallahan won't come back. Arroyo was on loan. He won't come back if he's gone back to Panama. So Left. I think for the for the time being, we will have a, uh, a period where we... Um, we do need to rely on Australian players and it won't just be us, it'll be the rest of the clubs as well. So whether, you know, we get to the end of this and there's a, an agreement made that contracts will um, be honoured until the conclusion of this season, given everything that's happened, and then they have the opportunity to move elsewhere for next season or whether it's, right, we got to this date, anyone who isn't on contract, anyone whose contract's expired now, you're a free agent and when we get back any club can sign you that's that's something that isn't just going to have to be something that's sorted out here i think it's something that's going to have to be sorted out around the world um there's going to be free agents uh coming off contract in the next couple of months um at the end of next month in, in particular especially in europe that um you know if if european leagues well a lot of them are being cancelled at the moment a lot of them have been uh, that's it. Yeah. So, just end I would imagine. Yeah, I'd imagine for the ones that are saying, "Yeah, that's it," then you know the contract part of it's kind of moot because mm. the season's done. But if it's something like the EPL who want to complete the season and are trying anything, including I saw a talk today that they this apparently want to come to Australia to finish off the uh, the season. Yeah, good one. Yeah, um, that'll work. Yeah. This is the kind of news that happens when you keep the sports bulletins just as long as they were when there's no sports going on. Mm. Uh, it's been, yeah, the, the sports the sports sections of things have been absolutely horrific for news. It's been painful. Um, but, yeah, it, like if, if it's one of those ones where, you know, Germany's trying to start up their league again, the EPL want to get theirs up. If they get to the end of June when contracts would have expired, and they're still playing, does that instantly mean that those players now do not play if they're off contract or are they going to extend it for a couple of weeks? It's it's something that I think is going to have to be um, sorted out around the world and done in a way that doesn't limit people but also doesn't um, 
you know, sc- screw them over if their contract is to end and then they can't travel anywhere to anywhere else to, to play football. Yeah, absolutely. I do find it slightly hilarious, though, that even with everybody in lockdown and no one able to go anywhere, there is still NRL, tr- NRL players getting in trouble. <laughs> Matter whether oh, but no, it's okay. We they're, they're good. They're good blokes. They they won't cause any problems. Oh uh, no, you know if if we're going to start on May twenty eighth, they're going to behave and everything. No, they're not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I just you know I like taking pot shots. It's funny. Um. All right. Well, we've yeah we've done about forty minutes. There's probably not really much else to talk about. Um. Yeah. Uh, good because I'm losing my natural light here. <laughs> Sun is going down, so yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty probably pretty much all we can talk about. That's all the news that's fit to fit to print and read and all that sort of stuff. So I hope everybody's uh, enjoyed this little catch up we've had. We'll we'll try and uh, organise another one for a few weeks, um, but I will be spending this week trying to organise uh, somebody to do another AMA with uh, on next Saturday. Um, to, to do a similar video um, again, like we found that this is probably a better option than uh, than trying to do the live stream. It just seems to be too uh, too temperamental. So we'll probably look at just uh, just recording it and um, and then uploading the video to Facebook and to uh, our, our YouTube channel. We do actually have a YouTube channel. Um, uh, the, the links are available on our website, so you'll be able to uh, to check it out there. There's not much there, but it's uh, stuff we're going to be we're going to be uploading and, and trying to do that a little bit more often. But um, yeah, I will uh, definitely be looking to pull the audio from this to put out as a podcast as well. So uh, if people listen to this on podcast and they hear background stuff and us talking about Audrey <laughs> about the cat. Um, <laughs> But camera, then uh, obviously you're just going to have to imagine things and just uh, think Kit and Kong and just go from there. Um, I can draw a picture for you if you want. Yes. We'll do we'll do that as the uh, we'll do that as the episode uh, episode art. So uh, yeah, definitely. Um, but, uh, yeah, if there's any if there's anybody you want us to get in contact with to see if we can do an AMA with, just uh, hit us up on our uh, socials, uh, Facebook. Uh, Twitter and Instagram, Jetstream Newey on all of those podcasts at NewcastleFootball.net or uh, yeah, you can uh, you can hit us up on uh, any of those pages and, and or via that uh, or via that email address. So, uh, M, thanks very much for uh, for jumping on and, and getting in before the natural light disappears. No, thank you for putting up with my vanity. No, that's fine. And uh, thanks, Lukey, for for coming on and the new the new setup's working fantastic, mate. Well done. Yeah, thanks for having me, Fern. So it's good to good to be back talking about football in some capacity. Yeah, in some capacity. And uh, hey, we can we can always get on and just not even talk about football next week. Uh, next time we can uh, we can get an AFQ together uh, where people just send in questions and we can just sit sit around and talk rubbish for for an hour on a Saturday night while we're drinking wine or whatever else we uh, whatever else we feel like drinking when we can't go out water water after last night <laughs> no no i want to do i want to do drunk afq i think that's going to be oh. the, I think all right that, but be prepared for me to bang my glass on my microphone lots of times so long as it doesn't I can't accidentally hit emma's boob from here <laughs> Uh, there's an in joke for a uh, yeah. <laughs> that uh, do you want to explain that or not? No, no, let's not explain that. Uh, well, my boob. What more is there to go on the story? <laughs> that's that's yes, that's that's pretty much where yeah, we can. Brisbane, Brisbane away, Brisbane away. Joey Chapman scored. Away, yeah, that is. We really need we really need away trips to come back. I I need to get I need to get back to Wellington. That's uh that let's just leave it there. Yeah. All right, thanks Em, thanks Luke, thanks everybody, and we will speak to you next time. Vamos el jerkos. Vamos. Go the Jets. Wash your hands. Yes, wash your hands. Sanitize. Socially distant.